back to Fujits Blitz with me, Fujits. Hello. So recently I issued a video on learning to play like last AFK, a professional player from the clan APA. Now in that video, we looked at playing light tanks and I mentioned that I would also release a video on how to play heavy tanks, the last AFK way. And here it is. Now like the previous video, there is literally no way I can give you the tools to have the skills of Last AFK. I mean, natural talent is, after all, natural. But what I can do is to try and get you into the mindset of Last AFK and to understand how he, like so many other super unicums and pro players, reads the game and adapts his game style accordingly. Now, in the two replays we're going to look at, we're going to be rolling out in the IS-7, a Soviet Tier 10 Heavy. It's one of the best heavies in the game. Now I will attempt to break down that gameplay, the strategy that Last AFK utilized, and to give you some pointers on what we mere mortals can try to bring to our own game in order to improve. Not only our skills, which will improve over time, but also our ability to win more games, or at least try to. Now in the first replay, we're on Castilla, and we are spawning from the South Spawn. Now, like I advised in the previous video, most games are actually won by reading and understanding the lineups, not just the enemy, but also yours. And playing heavy tanks is no different. We can see the enemy team only has one medium, with the remaining tanks being TDs and heavies. Now, this tells us they are most likely to be camping on the ridges near to their own spawn, TD-wise with the remainder of the team most likely splitting into two groups, one going towards the C-cap area, the other going towards the A-cap area. Now, the reasoning behind our thought process here is because both the A and the C-caps offer support from potentially camping TDs, so it makes perfect sense. Not only that, but heavy tanks are more likely to edge towards the C-cap area because they actually spawn near to it. Knowing this, Last AFK advised it was best for us to actually go to the middle, to the B-cap, as we would be able to split the enemy into two. This would give us multiple options, whilst having some protection from those TDs. Now what we predicted, or what Last AFK predicted, was almost 100% correct. The TDs were camping on the ridges, and the enemy team did split towards the A and the C-caps. This allowed us to take the B cap and then allowed us multiple options to either push A or harass them at C. Now the enemy 183 makes a huge mistake by trying to take the C cap because we're just able to spot him easily and our TDs camping on the ridge line behind us are literally able to obliterate him out of existence. Thing is, we are now realistically in a crossfire situation, but we do have the cover of the buildings and we also have the support from our own tanks. We should therefore be able to effectively pin down the enemy. Alas, I did lose a considerable amount of hit points at this stage due to this crossfire. But like I said in the previous video, I'm not here to show you how to get more damage or mastery badges, but how to effectively win more games. Now losing hit points in a heavy is not such a massive trauma because that is what they're designed to do to an extent. So don't be too afraid to lose a few hit points along the way. Now despite losing majority of my HP, we are still able to hold this line and basically pick off and farm out the enemy. In this game, the enemy were unable to move any further forward than their initial start point, all because we had moved into a position that denied the enemy any freedom to move, effectively making them play our game rather than theirs. This is called map control, and this game is a classic example of why map control is important. It allows you to dictate the battle rather than reacting to the enemy, which in turn forces the enemy to make mistakes that you can punish. I'm going to show you just on the minimap how effective map control is and how we deny the enemy any freedom of movement. And you can see the way our tanks are moving around the map, how we're able to engage the enemy, and how we're really able to contain them and stop them from pushing out. And it really is that straightforward. And map control is very, very important. There are takeaways from this video which are not too dissimilar to the previous video. Number one, read and understand the lineup of 
of both teams. Understanding the lineup in your own team is also important. That is where your support rests. Now in the last game, we had TDs as well, but also a medium, but we had one more heavy. It was predictable that our TDs would camp on the ridge line near the spawn with our medium going to the A side, quite possibly with a heavy tank or two. Now because from this spawn, the C cap is notoriously tricky to secure or be safe at, it was a pretty easy guess. Number two, use your hit points effectively and avoid unnecessary brawls. Well, there is literally no point saving up all your hit points. You do not get any rewards for the amount of HP you have at the end of the battle. Now that's not to say YOLO in and literally hand the enemy your hit points. That's just daft. You need to use your hit points, especially on heavy tanks, effectively because every time an enemy is shooting you in your heavy, they're not shooting your allies. Number three, Use the terrain to keep you safe. Knowing the maps is crucial. Knowing what spots can be used to engage the enemy whilst remaining relatively safe is incredibly helpful. Number four, know your tank. Understanding what your tank can and cannot do is vital. Now there is little point rolling out in a mouse if you have no understanding on how to use the armor effectively to get those bounces from the enemy. You need to know the weak spots as well as the strengths of what the ca tank can and cannot do. There is little point trying a ridge line in a tank with no gun depression and it is equally pointless to sit out in the open in a tank that has weak hull armor. Number five, don't rush. Rushing is one of the main reasons games are lost. Rushing only achieves two things. One, you're back to the garage really quickly, and two, you have little to zero contribution to your team. Now I see many players, especially in the heavy tanks, think they are totally impervious to enemy fire, which is not the case. Now in this game, we did not rush, and if you pay close attention, we hardly moved from our mid-line area. We didn't try to flank like so many seem to do nowadays in these slow-moving heavies. We didn't rush headlong in the the enemy again like so many tend to do now and we certainly didn't camp at the back of the map pretending to be either a sniper or a TD. What we did was the purest role of a heavy. We put ourselves onto the front line, had the enemy attempt to engage us, we denied the enemy their freedom and we punished the enemy for their mistakes. Number six, know and keep an eye on the minimap. The minimap is your eyes on the battlefield. It not only tells you where the enemy is but it also tells you where your friends are. Now I cannot overstate it enough, you must use the minimap at all times, it is literally a lifesaver. Moving on to the next game, this time we're on Lagoon and we're going to attempt to do nothing different to what we did in the last game. Now Lagoon is a new map and as such it's unfamiliar to quite a few players out there. But there is a distinct heavy route that is generally supported by TDs. Now that route is on the left side from this, the south spawn, or the right side from obviously the north spawn. Once again, the enemy lineup is red and predicted. Now in this game, the enemy has three heavies, two mediums and two TDs. It is therefore likely their heavies will go down that heavy route with some support from their TDs. And it's anticipated the mediums will go either the left side or the middle, the more medium orientated route. We are therefore going down their heavy route. We will stay wide in order to give us some much needed cover. Last AFK is in a haul down Beastie, the E5. So he will go more to the mid of the heavy side in order to use the strengths of that E5 to his advantage. I'm still in the IS-7, so I will push out far left, almost to the red line in order to keep that IS-7 safe and as predicted the enemy has indeed sent their heavy tanks this way and they do have some support from one of their TDs. So now comes the relatively tricky part who to focus. Well look in situations like this focus the tank that presents or the lowest hit point. In this situation the IS-7 presented. He's out in the open, he overcooks it so we focus him. I try to then put a shot into the crown wagon because the crown wagon whilst being a great tank is now out in the open with incredibly weak lower hull. We can wreck him literally and he's about to leave the game quicker than he got there. Now that uh, last AFK takes out the IS-8, we are free to focus on the IS-7. We, uh, we're looking for the track shots, but there's no point now. Just put the shots in. He's doomed and gloomed. And just like that, the enemy has lost all their heavy tanks. They've now only got the TDs 
and the mediums. Earlier on the mini-map, I saw that their mediums were going to try and flank round to get us from the rear through our spawn. So what we're doing, we're going to turn around to engage their mediums. And at the same time, I may be able to get a cheeky shot into the bottom plate of this TD, just as a parting gift. And there we go. And lo and behold, there is one of the Leos. The other Leo is just to the left-hand side. So we're going to reset our camo and take the base at the same time. Two birds, one stone. The mediums, well, the Leo gets a good shot into me, but now they realise the danger and they try to get out of dodge. What I'm going to do is cap the base at the same time and then re-evaluate the situation. Last AFK advises push mid. I'll go left, you go right once you've changed, uh, taken the base and therefore we can try and take out these two Leos. So Laft AFK jumps down to the left and goes through the middle. I'm going to push right. We're going to try and catch this Leo off guard, preventing from going anywhere. Last AFK puts the first shot in and I finish him off. This now leaves the enemy with just two tanks. The 4TD, which is up on that perch, and the other Leo, who unfortunately left his teammate, al uh, teammate alone and isolated, allowed us to destroy destroy him. Last AFK pushes up on the E4 and with that E5 stonkingly good turret armor along with his ability to drop that reactive armor he's able to put a lot of pressure on that E4 without taking too much damage in return. I'm desperately trying to get the IS-7 back up the hill to put the shot in but I bounce the E4. Last AFK is whittling him down to next to nothing. Down goes the Leo and so there Leo still being a bit of a pain just kills our 57 heavy but last AFK finishes him off, leaving just the E4. I will put one into the bottom plate, and voila, game is done. So just like in the last replay, let's jump over to the minimap. You can see us pushing down here onto the ACAP, gauging their heavy tanks. We have got a congestion of our tanks here, so we have the superiority. You see their mediums pop, we turn around, we take the ACAP, and then we're just going to push onto those two mediums get them out of the game via a pincer movement, continue our push through to the remaining tanks, and before you know it, that's it, game is done. That is map control, and it's pretty straightforward stuff when you know how. So the takeaways from that game is pretty much exactly the same as the first replay we saw. Number one, read and understand the lineups of both teams. Number two, use your hit points effectively and avoid those unnecessary brawls number three use the terrain to your advantage number four know your tank and how it works number five don't rush chill take a chill pill and number six use and understand that minimap at all times now look most of these takeaways are not too dissimilar from the pointers we had in the previous video aside from don't be afraid to relocate which for the heavies is changed to don't rush again i'm not guaranteeing that these pointers will win you more games because that's just not the case that depends on your team and your skill level but what i can say is that by using these basic pointers along with those that we looked at in the last video you increase your chances to win more games which must and can only be a good thing anyway i've been fujit and that has been my follow-up to the video See is last AFK, this time focusing on the heavy tanks. I'm going to be interested to see your comments on this one. That's what the comments section is designed for, after all. And I hope you found this video useful. Maybe you can give it a little like, maybe a little subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, until the next time, I hope to be looking at mediums again with last AFK. I've been Fujit, that has been last AFK, and I will say my usual stuff. Stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking, because at the end of the day, that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.